Okay, this session is about what the chess piece's purpose is. Just going to go in on the 10 minute game. We haven't done a warm up, so we're treating this as the warm up. And we know how calamitous not warming up can cause our situation. But we're going to risk it for a biscuit. So, what's the purpose of the chess pieces? This opponent's playing real quick. Um, but the purpose is really to try and keep the king safe, try and gain advantages in the game. Try and take advantage of the weak squares, the weak pieces, and the areas around the king. So the pawn has done its activity. It's grabbed the pawn here. We're comfortable about doubling the pawns. We like this position with the pawn because it does stop this pawn from attacking when we're going to develop the knight. So that's future tense type practice. Now they're targeting this pawn here. We can bring this knight up because we do have the protector with this pawn so they're going for the quick and dirty tactics they want to get rid of this knight so that they can get this power base onto here in the meantime we can actually take this knight because there's no protection on the knight doesn't mean we're winning anything because the queen's obviously going to come back to protect the pawn or come here it's not gone there so it looks like we're going to get a rook with a check on the king but has, have they improved their position in terms of attacking our king Gary? If the bishop does take, we can take back with our bishop. So it feels fairly comfortable there. There's nothing that can take the knight off the board if we put the check on the king to go and get the rook. We don't need to rush to go and get the rook at this moment in time. We can leave the knight here. Is there an attack on the king? There is, but the pawn can simply drop down and then it's attacking a higher piece. Do we have any other attacks at all in any way shape? We could just go and castle king safety. I think we'll take the rook off the board first so that we're not going to any complications and we don't mind getting the knight taken off the board. So they are actually going for the exchange. They're still chomping at the bit to try and get this. So this pawn here is the massive protector like we said. So we can take the pawn off the board. We're attacking a higher piece with the queen. So still for a brief moment, we've circumvented this tunnel vision attack that they've got on this pawn towards our king. Now the king's queen's moved on to a white square. We can't attack it because the bishop's not got any support. We can attack the queen this way to see if we can get it off the board. I think that's a more appropriate thing for the queen. The purpose of it is to try and equalize or cause damage. Is the queen just going to run and escape? We are attacking their bishop as well. I would assume they would take, and we can take the queen here. Their rook's not in the game at the minute. The knight's not in the game, but we're not so worried about that. Let's just try and gain some advantage. It doesn't have to take, like we say, it can come here. Not going to go there because the knight will take it. He can hide well not there not there so the only place really is here if he's going to move the queen which means we would be able to take the bishop off the board with a check on the king winning us a bit of tempo and they have actually gone that way so we're going to take with the check on the king and this moving down a little bit we have a dark square bishop we can put another check on the king where is the queen king going? Knight can come out of there and actually put a check on the king as well. Might be really suffocating the king. Does it really have anywhere else to go? One more space. Maybe back, back, back. Here, here, here. Or something interjecting. Or is my knight getting taken off the board that I don't know? Ah, oh, it's got a safe spot here. So it would be nice if we could get this castle and get the rook into the game. Do we need to do that? I think keeping more pressure on the king with the bishop. Just to give them something to think about. Probably hide in the corner here or he's going back. It's on a white square. Now the queen is protecting this square. So the bishop can actually come and put an x-ray through to the king. So the queen can't move out of that spot. So we can take and put the check on the king. I'm going to take the knight just for a bit of a freebie. No, they're not doing. So we could go and take this pawn and get the rook off the board. Well, not get the rook off the board. We're attacking the rook. 
the rook obviously doesn't want to get taken so it may come here but then the knight can take it so we will take this pawn and attack the rook and it's actually saving the knight now because the king can't take it anymore and we're going to take and put a check on the king which they obviously going to take the knight now and I think just to reduce down I'm just going to take pieces off the board now and they'll just take pawns off and be careful of any stalemates from this point on so let's take he can move the pawns he's trying to hide into this little square here somewhere to try and go for stalemate he can move his pawns so I think this probably is a moment to we can just castle So this has all happened very quickly as we're talking about the purpose of the chess pieces. So they're looking to trade down so they can go for a stalemate of some sort. Shall we just bring... Okay, they've resigned. A very nice example there of the purpose of the chess pieces. It was a little bit quick, a bit frantic actually. I was only moving at the pace of the opponent and trying to grab those weak spaces weak pieces and just the position on the board seemed to fall into our lap in this particular game because the opponent was moving fast it's not to say that everybody that moves fast doesn't find those correct positions you do have those monsters that do find those good positions and we allow them to um, win the games just break it down let's see what the engine thinks of our maneuvers so they're attacking through and we take the pawn off the board and we bring our pawn up like we said to support. Early queen move, we bring the knight up and they bring the bishop down so it's giving us a bit of an advantage because the knight doesn't have any protection as we mentioned. The queen moves, ordinarily the queen would move back, you know in these sort of situations it would move back to protect the pawn at least. So that's a key thing there, so then it's giving us that opportunity to grab a higher piece and ordinarily they wouldn't take the bishop there at that point either they'd probably mobilize the knight you know get the knight out to actually at least get another piece off the board I'll just go back boom yeah so they probably would move the knight or something like that so at least then the same well i'm getting you getting your knight anyway do have space for the knight to move here anyway so we would be able to defend the knight for a brief moment So capture capture then we're going for the exchange but we're also attacking another piece so at this point in time it's just a matter of do we develop our pieces by going for castling or do we keep that pressure on and the sort of candidate type maneuvers are for us position first is our position going to be any good checks captures threat support blocking and then back to position again so out of those choices there it was more appropriate because the king really didn't have any um, defenses it was a bit airy so we chose the option of looking at the position first then looking for the checks on the king which seemed to work out pretty okay again another check on the king and then looking oops basically getting the pin through to the king from a lesser piece to a higher piece and at that point there it's just maintaining those checks and just reducing down the pieces now from here and obviously looking to avoid any stalemates so that's the purpose of the chess piece okay continuing the purpose of the chess pieces what are they designed to do so pushing the pawn through like we do just managing the center and four knights and this opponent is moving quickly as well a bit like in the last example we are just going to bring the bishop here and hopefully try and get castled let's just castle and we're going to just bring the bishop up sorry the pawn supporting the pawn making space for the bishop to eventually come here but it's looking for the fried liver so they're going for the fried liver attempt i think they probably will go for it so the knight and the bishop for a rook yes they are and let's take all right so we've got more material on the board and that's the plus side of it but now we have to adjust and try and prevent the opponent from utilizing the strength of the rooks the only advantage they've got is the 
strength of the rooks and what is the strength of the rooks it likes to have open files to work with so if we can keep everything locked down we might be able to stand a better chance I'm going to bring this queen here now the king is home alone at the minute so can we try and do something in terms of if we take this he doesn't necessarily need to take he can bring his queen here beforehand if we take and they do take our queen can get in here but there's no further checks on the king that can happen apart from the knight jumping here looking to put pressure on here but i think the queen may circumvent it we are going for it we're going to take and see what happens they do actually take our plan of action is to try and get in here but we'll see see how it goes We're assuming, oh, and they stopped the knight from coming in. Stop the knight from coming in, but we're going to get a draw. Yep. We're going to get a nice steady draw. Before we do the next move, is there anything else that the knight could do? Could the knight move here? Do we have time for the knight to move here? That's the question, because if the knight moves here, then I'm assuming the rook is going to come here to attack the queen. If the rook comes to attack the queen, we put the check on the king, and that's checkmate, isn't it? Or does the queen come here and then get involved? I'm going to bring the knight up and see if that actually works. I'm assuming human nature is going to do this, but maybe there's some other manoeuvre that they're going to do, such as the knight or something. But there is quite a few things they can do actually. It doesn't have to be the rook move. But I just thought I'd give it one more chance to see if there's anything better than a draw. Utilising the purpose of the pieces. What else is the bishop attacking? Oh, they've gone for the rook thing, which is going to be a checkmate. Oh, lovely. The purpose of the chess pieces, purpose of this pawn at this moment is to take this pawn off the board, feeling comfortable with the position, and then knights attacking higher pieces is really appropriate. Queen's moved into the land of getting attacked quite a few times, but we're not going to fall for it, we're just going to take our time is still targeting this pawn here we're going to take our time because obviously the knight can attack the queen here but we're not doing that we're not doing that just yet i think the knight is looking to come here to attack the pawn which it is doing now to me that doesn't mean a good position it's a focal point on quick and dirty tactics okay so now the queen's moved again no other pieces have been moved gives us the opportunity to actually attack the knight. We do have two pieces on this pawn, so the queen can take with a check on the king. So fulfilling a purpose of putting, putting a check on the king or pressure around the king or the king area, they do have options of this or this or this or this, so it can be blocked off quite easily. So it's definitely not winning just because you won a pawn. Still have to kind of try and improve your position or see if you can target any other weak pieces or weak squares, weak areas around the king, etc. etc. So the bishop's out. We can just develop the bishop. We can develop this bishop, but the queen is looking to attack a cheap pawn. The knight can move here, like we said, to put pressure on the queen. But I'm not really wanting to get involved in that at this moment. I just want to see if I can get to king safety. Purpose of the piece is to try and keep your king safe. Don't get embroiled in a big battle when you haven't even sorted your bed out yet. Queen is chomping to just attack the queen to see what he's wanting to do. So we'll bring this across and attack the queen. At least we've got readiness to go and castle. 
potentially. They do take, so now the knight is going to be attacking the bishop, but they may not want the bishop being taken, they may bring it back. They're not going to bring it there, obviously, so they may just bring it back. So simple methodology of the use of the pieces, what is their purpose? And are they willing to sacrifice themselves for the good of the team? Are they willing to help pave the way to make a better position? So this is paving the way for a better position, just capturing the pawn, because <clears throat> now it's split this pawn again from the other pawns. It is an isolated pawn in the center of the board. Do have the option of doing the same for us, but we can link our pawns up. So I think going for strength of mobility, tacking two pieces, they capture, our pawn is in the center, but we do have pieces that can help support it towards the end game, which is what we're in now. So this small piece can attack this um, higher piece, again, losing them tempo, but we're not getting the knight for free. We are actually probably bringing the pawn in to help support this pawn, which is not really what we want to do, but you know, um, we could just attack and then bring the knight back and attack that way. I think I'm going to go with a smaller piece and I will be taking that knight off the board. So we will attack with a smaller piece. The pawn is saying, yes, I'm in the fight. I'm helping you, king. I'm helping team. This is what I'm here to do. This is the purpose of my being on this board. So taking here, knowing that it's bringing this pawn back into line with this pawn here. We're happier with, okay, it's gone all the way back so they're not getting castled. Is there anything else that we can do then? We could bring this bishop here. Because if we bring this bishop here and if we do get the time to take the knight, then if the pawn takes, then the bishop can take. I think we'll do that because we really don't want to have this pawn here. We would do if we had to, you know, if they had done a different move, we probably would have just taken the knight off the board. And they've actually taken anyway, so they've left this isolated pawn here, which is what we kind of wanted. And they've landed on the stealth bishop. Which is ideal for us. So we could go for queenside castling with a check on the king. Don't think there's many checks after this. This isolated pawn, I'm looking to try and make them pay the price, maybe get the knight here. He can defend though with his knight and he will be attacking our pawn. So how is this going to work? If we did it slow potatoes and we went like this, then it stops the knight from jumping there, then we would be able to. But I'm so eager and it looks like they've left the game. Okay, so that's the purpose of the chess pieces, trying to break it down a bit at a time. It looks like they've definitely left the game. Okay. Okay, looking at the purpose of the chess pieces. Just a quick whistle stop visit to the account. So just capturing the pawn, capturing the knight. So going for simplicity. As usual, just bringing the bishop out. Obviously, we never get to target this pawn, but it's a nice idea. It's also baiting pawns. It's also baiting the bishop. Like we say, baiting the pawns. It's nice to go here, but the bishop just comes to attack, and then the bishop's got no protection, so the queen comes back down here. So I am just going to bring the bishop here. The purpose of this bishop is to say, well, I want to get this bishop off the board, really. Because in my eyes, it's the bad bishop, it's the king side bishop. Let's make it functional. 
So obviously they usually just bring the bishop here and we just take the bishop off the board. That's its purpose. It's completed its purpose. Now we have something to do with the queen because the smaller piece is attacking the queen. We can move the queen here. We can move the queen here. Um, but in essence, the knight is going to come out and it's going to attack the queen if it comes here. So we want to put it to a favorable pace. We can bring it all the way back if we wanted to. We can bring it here. What purpose is it serving? It's opposite the king. I suppose we can do that. Grand scheme of things, I think the computer would just bring it back here. I'm going to bring it here. It is blocking the dark square bishop at the minute, but we do have space to go and castle anyway. So elements are potentially giving the king a little bit of company, is supporting the pawn. Potentially, if they're thinking of going queenside castling, we're ready to rock and roll. Do have elements of pushing the pawn here and getting the knight up, jumping the knight into the center. So all of that is based on the purposes of the pieces. And I think we're going to jump with this pawn first, giving space for the knight to jump here in order to maybe attack this square. Queen's on the white square, so there's no checks on our king at the minute. So we do have a few seconds to get castled if need be. Do they waste the time with the bishop or do they go and castle queenside? That's probably what the omen and are in. Or are they going to put a two on one on the pawn with the queen and the knight? Which option do you think they're going to take? Any of them or none of them? Are they going to jump the knight and attack the queen? Again, it kind of loses the, loses the tempo, but it is a move. You can physically do it. They're going into a deep, deep, deep think. So yeah, looking at the purposes of the moves, as I explained before, it's a it's different to calculation. It's the calculation, you know, you're working out where you know where the pieces are going, the movements, the you know, the, you're calculating prospective opportunities. Whereas the purpose of the maneuvers are to look at really what is the makeup of that piece, where is it going to be best sighted. It's not necessarily looking at the further continuation of any of the moves it's looking at well what purpose am i going to serve do i need to help the team in some way by being in this position and really looking it all supports each other the calculations support the purposes purposes support the calculations just for my own purposes because it's, it's something that's missing so i'm going to develop the knight like we said just to bring it here the purpose of it is to attack and get a reaction, which is usually the knight coming here. And if they get castled, the rook will be chomping up a bit to get a x-ray through to the queen. So at this point, I think we'll go and castle because we don't need to rush any of that. And they have come and attacked the queen. So their purpose, they thought, right, okay. But I'm thinking it kind of does lose them tempos in terms of development on the board. So we can quite easily move the queen here. And the purpose for that being that we have a diagonal towards the pawn, potentially at some point the purpose of the rook coming here. We're wanting to get our bishop out of this um, situation as well though, so maybe the bishop's probably better sitting there. And maybe the queen's purpose is just uh, hanging around here, maybe here. I like it being here because... Although I suppose the pawn can push onto the knight as well. So I'm thinking, let's refirm that. In order for it to help the team out fully, I think we need to come here so that the bishop's got space to come out. We do have small touches of the pawns onto the knight as well. Okay, so they've got some method going. So they're attacking the pawn here, which in my eyes looks easily defended 
So we will just bring the pawn here in support for now. Still do have sights of bringing the knight here, attacking their bishop. Although to all intents and purposes, it is their bad bishop. So am I going to give up a good knight for a bad bishop? In our mantra, knights hunt the bishops. If it's to our benefit, of course. So we could jump the knight in now. It's a nice position for it, we don't have to take. Gives them something to think about. And then this bishop is potentially looking to come here or for the quick and dirty. They have allowed us that um, maneuver. It's just, he's going to win a pawn, isn't it? We bring the bishop here, we're attacking the pawn. So he has to react to that. So he's not going to push because he'll lose the rook. So the bishop probably coming here. Knight takes. Uh, so that's a bit bad for them. But what can their knight do before we go there? Because we're thinking, oh, we've got a winner. Knight could just come in the middle here, couldn't it? Yep, so we go like this. Feeling the purpose is going to be getting a quick dirty checkmate. But the knight just jumps there and blocks. There's no more sting. Knight takes the bishop, queen takes. And then they've got this pawn to contend with. Although if he does take, we just take. Hmm. This knight's got a nice position here. Could get a rook off the board. I think that's better than going for any of that fancy business. So we'll jump in here. We're attacking two high pieces. So the purpose, looking at the purpose, we're gaining what looks like higher material and they're moving a bit quick now so now they're still on this pawn with the knight so I think we need to shoe the knight with us with a lesser piece although really the queen's going to come back and get this pawn this is why they're moving fast so we attack the knight as we don't want it supporting this pawn when it takes <clears throat> Where are we sending it to? Oh, it's got a nice safe spot here, but the queen can take it, so it's not too safe. It jumps back, maybe. Maybe the queen takes. Okay, let's hit the knight. Small piece attacking higher piece. The pawn is saying, let me in. Let me help you out. Maybe it comes there thinking it's winning something. Okay, so we're not going to chase it because obviously it just comes back again. Well, the key thing now is this pawn is not protected so we need to defend it with the queen mm. queen supporting we pushed takes takes maybe it doesn't take takes takes the knight's not going to take because the queen will take it back queen takes then it's got a two on one on the pawn yeah. How do we want to play this? Maybe we can bring the bishop here. But we're going to lose this pawn. Ooh, maybe I have to bring the rook here. Or is it the queen? We go there with the queen. This knight's just going to attack. Okay, let's go with the queen anyway. Let's go with the queen anyway. Oh, time is running out. Three minutes. So he's gone straight for the attack. We did say that. We don't need to say it, stay there, we can just move the queen across, or maybe not to there, maybe to here. What's he planning with the knight? Let's go here. He's flicking like crazy, so I've got a bit of an issue now. Got a bit of an issue. Oh, I've just been told that um, somebody has been banned as well, um, who I played. Alright, so they've moved the knight up back again. We want to get this bishop maybe here. Because they're moving dead quick. Move the bishop here. Look at the flicking going on. Unbelievable. Just play a normal game. Right, so the rook's probably got to come here, start putting two on ones. And they've actually pushed past. So I'm going to actually attack the queen. They're probably not going to it. Okay, so I'll just take on the in. 
So I highly develop pawn at the minute. Maybe try and get these pawns double. So he's looking to put pressure down here now. And so if we do this, attack the bishop, and then if we push onto the knight, which is supporting it, maybe the knight will disappear. Unless, of course, he blocks the pawn. He's not doing that, so we'll hit the knight, which is supporting the bishop. But again, the purpose of the small, tiny pawns is working quite nicely for us. Oh, but we can take and take. Obviously, he's going to attack us, whichever way he's attacking us. We're not squeezing in just yet, are we? Right, so his bishop's probably coming here. We'll be pushing here. So are we going here, trying to protect this pawn? There's some sort of combination of stuff going off here. If we can get this one here, then there might be a back ranker thing going on. But the king's just going to come close, and then we're not going to get any passages. Well, let's get the rook off the board. We do have a pass pawn. Maybe we can try and do something with that. But his bishop will just take it off the board, but we will have a rook. Keep pushing, so he's going to have to take with the bishop. I think the king's too far off the other side, so we can keep pushing can take with a check on the king. Should we take with a check on the king? I think we should, shouldn't we? We've got time to do that. Just to get reduced down the pieces. And take. So we've got a rook against the king. The king probably isn't going to be fast enough to protect this pawn. So we should be able to take this one. It's coming down, trying to get these into. So if we come here, comes there, we push up. Move the king and we just attack it. It's best not to be too blase because you never know if that rhythm that they've got there is going to actually win. Oh, and they've resigned. Okay, so that's the purpose of the chess pieces. Okay, let's see what we've got in store today. We're still in the purpose of the chess pieces scenario. So let's have a look at this. They're looking to go for the reverse fried liver type thing. So we may as well push this pawn to stop the knight from going there. When I say reverse, it's basically attacking the queen rather than the king. And to get activated, let's get this bishop out. Might as well take this bishop off the board. Make some space for potential kingside castling. Potential as we like to do. They always go here because they want this pawn to take so that then the rook and the queen are facing this pawn. Yep. It's a standard process, but if you don't know it, then you'll fall foul of it. So we won't take the bishop because it just opens this up here. I've gone into a deep think. It is 15 minute, 10 second game. So looks like we're expecting this one to be a nice long thinking game or a painful game, depending on if the advantages are for the opponent. So currently the exercises that we've been doing, the games we've been playing, we've been lucky so far in terms of demonstrating the the purposes of the chess pieces. The luck is landing on our side in each of the games at the minute. And when I say luck, it's not, not dumbing down what we're doing. It's just basically saying the more we practice, the more we train, the luckier we seem to get. It's um one of those things. So they put a lot of thought into this pawn move, but our pawn is saying, well, we like to obliterate the center if we can. So thank you very much for the offer. I'll accept your offer. And I will accept your offer again and just capture this knight just to keep it nice and simple. And I will attack your queen. Thank you very much. But you're not going to exchange because nobody does that nowadays. Apparently. Let's dance with the queen.
go back to where I came or here or something or there. Long hard think. Too simplified. Let's just take it off the board. We don't need to be dancing. No concerns. Simple is a simple does. So the bishop, pawn's actually taken, which has blocked his own bishop. So there must be some, sign, some sort of crazy maneuvers that we're going to see. I'm actually bringing the bishop here. Looking to sight it here. Hopefully if we can get these pawns up and get it here. Whilst we're going castling on the king side. I'm still not sure why they took with the pawn there. But they may show us why. So the bishop can take this pawn, but it's, it looks to me like they, they're organized and are we missing something? I don't know. Let's just take. Does it get trapped? I can't see it being trapped. No, not really. Just come back again to where we were. Maybe come here. Options and choices. I'm coming here. Going back to where we started. And I am going to castle on the king's side. I'm, I don't think I'm worried about what they potentially can do here. This pawn split from that pawn. So it's, this pawn needs to be supporting this pawn. So the knight's probably going to have to come back around again. Or maybe it's going forward. So it's constantly pushing. And now we can maybe not go there. Because the knight king, the rook will take. Let's bring the knight out and see if we can just hit the rook whilst they are contemplating this singular type attack towards our king. We don't have anything, any great shakes. They are actually owning the file at the minute with the rook. And we're lo looking to just get a trade going. Plus one at the moment, but as we already know, being plus one doesn't mean anything until later in the end game. We're at the start of the end game here. Opponent's putting deep thought into it. I do think they oh he's coming for the bishop, which is really we want him to push here, but now looking at his rook, his rook maybe can come here. So we can push this pawn just to give the bishop some space, as we said in the early doors. I think that's what we're going to do. Could go and challenge the rook now. And he just hits us anyway with the pawn. And then we can come here, but we're blocking our pawn. Don't really need to lose too much sleep over that, really. Yeah, okay. I'm actually going to hit the rook first before we do that. It just feels like that's probably a little bit too arty. Let's go with practical in your face. Get the exchanges if we can. And then potentially look at doing that if we have the time. Probably won't have the time because they'll just hit us straight away. So we'll just sit here. Oh, that's a nice position, but his bishop's there. Can we get the bishop away? No, not really. No. Let's just take it off the board. All right, so the pitch has changed a bit. There's no rook there, so we'll go with our rook. And as we said, they'll be hitting here. I'm just thinking now, we can't go here, we can't go there. We can physically go here to attack this pawn. Their bishop can come and defend. Where's the knight going? I think the bishop can come here now. The whole pitch has changed. To attack this pawn. Their rook's not here to attack our rook. So like I said, okay, so we take the pawn. Bishop doesn't have a check on our king, so he's not going to get the rook for free if he did some fancy manoeuvre. I think they're just going to come here and attack the bishop. They've not done any of that. They've left this pawn over here. 
and they've got two pieces in front of the rook so we sh we do have time i think to take the pawn right, it's wanting to get into the game Bishop's out, it's attacking the rook. Would hit the bishop. Where we're sending it to. Gonna hit the bishop. What places it can go, what's it doing? Goes there, put a check on the king, but the knight is there. Knight takes, rook takes with a check. We've lost the piece, so that's no good. Double the pawns because we're up three at the minute. Back the knight. Knight takes, rook takes with a check, pawn takes. Does that not feel like it would work? Knight there, knight takes. Rook takes, pawn takes, so we've just got bishops and we've got more pawns. Maybe we don't need to do that. Right. The next move is crucial. Maybe it is going that simple and just relying on having plus three pawns against these pawns here. Maybe the bishop's not going to survive. Shall we take that chance because we are up, so really we should be trading. Okay, let's take the chance. We're up free, trade. Going with the basics of chess, yeah. The purpose of the pieces. It's saying you've got more material in the end game of the end game. So you should be advantageous if they do capture. If they follow the process, they might not do any of that. All right, so he's attacking the bishop. So we take the knight, he takes the bishop, but he's got to check on the king, so he has to take it back anyway. So take it back probably with the pawn. Oh, that's a problem for them, isn't it? If they take with the... I think they'll take with the rook, because if they don't take... With, if they take with the pawn, this bishop is coming here. I'm getting excited. Let's take. And it's it would be pinning the rook to the king. Oh my days. So it has pinned the rook to the king. But we get to we get the rook. It's not for free, obviously, but it'll be a rook against the bishop. And they've resigned. Okay, so the purpose of the pieces.